When asked how you assess credit risk, if you mention at these five points, the rest of the interview will become a lot easier. So the five C's are an easy way to summarize your answers when it comes to assessing credit risk and the interviewer is expecting you to mention these points in your answers. The reason why they're actually looking for this methodology is it shows that you have a holistic understanding of risk and are confident in using your knowledge. So the first C is about character. Now, if you're dealing with a person, it's obviously referring to the character or reputation of that one individual. But if you're being asked to review the credit risk of a company, then it's about the character of the management and the firm as a whole. Have they demonstrated a good reputation in the market? Do they have good corporate responsibilities? And do they care about maintaining it? The trick here is not to be subjective. Yes, read news articles and do online searches, but working in credit risk is always about data. So when reviewing reports and documents, look to see if there have been any negative markers via credit bureaus or rating agencies, as this will allow you to back up your view with stats. And what your research is going to lead onto is the second C, which is capacity. So here capacity is referring to how likely is a person or company able to manage their credit loan request. Of course, when you're reviewing if someone has the capacity to repay, you're going to want to review the capacity to generate income and how strong that is. You're going to be doing this by performing sensitivity analysis, which will question the assumptions they've used about their future income projections and assessing how realistic they are. To drill down here and assess the capacity further, you're going to use a couple of key financial ratios. And whilst I can just say learn a simple debt to income ratio, that's not going to be enough in a credit risk interview for a large organization. Instead, I want you to focus on a couple which I discussed in a previous video, which I'll link in the description box below. The key point here is to make sure you link all the ratios together as a show that you've got a good and solid understanding of the financial statements and you didn't just memorize it for the interview. So honestly, this one, I've never actually felt it deserves its own C and it's only included because five C's sounds better than four. But for the sake of the video, I'll cover it. So it's to do with the financial strength of the borrower, how much money have they invested in their own business, which could be used to generate additional income if required, perhaps, for example, by selling machinery. To be honest, this one sounds very similar to the analysis you would have done under capacity. But this C also looks at some kind of guarantee that the company or person can provide. But again, predominantly, this one is covered in another C, which I'll look at next, which is collateral. So here you're looking at what can be used as a guarantee if things go bad. An easy example is a mortgage where a house is the collateral if the mortgage borrower can't make their repayments. But for a company, it's a bit more complicated. You see, when assessing collateral and if it's good enough to be used in the deal, it's not just about the value of what's being offered. You also have to review how easily can it be collected? How easily can it be sold? And are there any costs associated with keeping it whilst you're in the middle of holding it. A good example of a bad collateral is an airplane located in another country. Now, there's no doubt that the airplane is worth a lot of money. It could be in the millions. And so on paper, it looks like it's a good collateral. But if things go bad in the deal and you need to collect the airplane for collateral, you'll need to hire a pilot to collect and deliver it. You'll need to pay somewhere to store it. And you've got to also figure out how to sell an airplane as it's not something that everyone has expertise in. So these are some of the points which are often missed by candidates when they're discussing collateral in interviews. So this C is about doing a horizon scan of what the external environment is like with respect to the credit request. So let's say the credit extension is for a farming project in East Asia. What are you going to be looking at here is the regulations in that area, political stability, weather, and other industry and macroeconomic indicators which may impact the project success. A good point to make here in your interview is you'll want to bring in legal here because you would want them to opine on the conditions attached to the contract and if there's anything you need to be aware of from a legal perspective. That last step is an excellent point to show that you understand and need to be a team player and bring other stakeholders in where necessary to help you. So regardless of what you may think, credit risk is not just about numbers. There's a lot of soft skills required and if you want to get to know the top five soft skills that I've seen help people succeed in credit risk roles, then I'll leave a video where I cover them next to me. So go check that out and I'll see you all in the next video.